This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. It's been a little bit since the last worst anime worlds to live in video, and last time we went through some pretty bad verses, those being Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, and Pokemon. So today we're gonna go through some more worlds and see how we would fare in each of them. However, there are some guidelines that I want to remind y'all of so that we all understand the criteria. Number one, you will be going into each world as yourself, so you will not receive any benefit of crazy genetics, hidden demons, or overpowered abilities for that said verse. If you are not already that guy in real life, then you probably will not be like that in the verse. Number two, any power system of the anime that can be learned by anyone will also be able to be learned by you for example since every human has chakra in the naruto verse if you have enough chakra you might be able to learn some jutsus but like i always say don't expect to have some accelerated learning process like some of our favorite characters and finally for number three each anime we go through will be placed in a tier list for how bad they are and like last time i'm gonna let pass me run through that tier list we got multiple tiers a tier being better than real life b tier basically being real life c tier being a world where you're fine as long as you mind your business d tier is you're probably cooked if you go to this anime and f tier is delete yourself because something or someone else will do it for you there's also one other guideline that i forgot to mention you're allowed one thing when you go into each world to help you out and keep you safe you will be allowed access to our sponsor surfshark vpn huge thank you to surfshark vpn for sponsoring the video since you're watching this video i'm going to assume that you like to watch anime cartoons or other types of tv shows and i'm also going to assume that some of y'all use something called the internet to enjoy your favorite pieces of media however the internet is a dangerous place and some websites and hackers will try to take your information any chance that they get that's where our trusty tool surfshark vpn comes into play to help us out surfshark is a vpn that encrypts your online data and helps to secure your personal information when browsing the internet. Things like your IP address are covered so that no one can get their hands onto your own identity. But you may be wondering, what if I don't use any fishy websites? Well, you're still in luck because Surfshark VPN is still extremely useful as you're able to change the location of your device to numerous different countries. This has a lot of versatility as you're able to see a bunch of different content that is not available in your own country. For example, if we go to Netflix, we can see that in the US, we basically got nothing over here. We can't even watch the MCU movies like we used to be able to. But if I just click a button to switch my server to Great Britain, then I have access to a new library with cartoons like Spongebob or movies like Venom and Spider-Man Homecoming now being available to me. Make sure that you secure your own privacy with Surfshark VPN. Enter the coupon code Alamasam or scan this QR code for an extra four months free. There will also be a link in the description to help you out with that too. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it out and get a refund if necessary. So with all that out the way, let's get into our first world. Now this segment might be a bit longer than usual because the One Piece world has a lot going on in it. There are numerous races, thousands of islands, different ways to get power, and multiple power dynamics going on at the same time. First off, we gotta establish that the One Piece world is massive, it's bigger than our own Earth. Although it's likely an exaggeration, it's implied that there may be millions of islands in the One Piece world, each one likely being different from the last. Meaning, if you spawn here, there's no telling what type of island you'll be on. We only know a very, very small percentage of islands because we're following the Straw Hats on their journey throughout the series. And from the islands we've seen now, there's usually been some type of conflict going on in each of them. It could be conflict stemming from the world government as they have shown to be extremely corrupt and power hungry. Just look at what happened to Robin's home Ohara. These guys will stop at nothing to prevent information about the world to be common knowledge. And thanks to our good old friend Gold D. Roger, we have an age of pirates as well. And not that kind of pirate. Essentially, a bunch of people decided that they wanted to explore the seas and try to find the one piece that Roger hid. And a large chunk of these pirates took the opportunity to just be even bigger criminals and start raiding islands and ships for everything that they got. So it is a common occurrence to see an island get raided by a crew of pirates for all of its resources. They also might just try to take control of the island as well as exploit the population. Even the marines who are supposed to prevent conflict on islands are liable to being corrupt. Shoot, they might even help oppress the islands as well because of some underhanded money. If we assume that most of the islands outside of the ones we know follow a similar pattern, then you'll have to deal with either pirates raiding the island you spawn in or the rampant corruption caused by the marines and or world government. These inherent qualities automatically make living in the One Piece world a bit harder than we have in some parts of the world that we already have. Now we have another thing to think about. What type of life would you live in the one piece world i'd like to think that there are three main routes that you can go down if you happen to spawn into the one piece world the first being the most simple one which is just being an ordinary civilian if we assume you spawn on a semi-normal island you'll go about your life as usual with the impending worry of pirates running all your village's pockets in case you're feeling quite bold and want to fight back against them just know that these guys will likely be armed and willing to murk you i know i joke around with east blue pirates being fodder but captain kuro is beating the brakes off of 90 percent of people also as i mentioned previously it's possible that a very strong pirate pirate will take control of the island and exploit you and your neighbors so good luck with that again as i mentioned previously the world government and marines are probably not as much on your side as you may think 
Bro, the world government doesn't even recognize some islands because of a lack of ties to them. A kind whose biggest glazer greenbow was yapping about the celestial dragons being gods and how the citizens of Wano are not even really people. So clearly, human rights really aren't much of a thing in the One Piece world. The second route you could take is becoming a pirate, which is probably the worst out of the three in my opinion. First off, you're a criminal and you'll basically have GTA stars on you depending on your bounty, if you even get one. Just know that the marines will be ready to arrest you if they catch you. Being a pirate is also extremely difficult to do. You need some type of skill like navigation or healing or swordsmanship because traveling in the One Piece world is not for the weak. Don't even think about starting a crew yourself and becoming a captain. The best option for you will definitely be getting backpacked by a captain who's already strong or has great qualities. Speaking of being strong, getting as strong as possible would probably help a lot in this world, but you, the viewer, and I are just regular humans. It's gonna take a minute to gain some sort of relevant strength naturally through training. The easiest way to get a power up would be to eat a devil fruit, but as you may already know, devil fruits are extremely rare and extremely expensive. You rarely see fruits in your lifetime, so you need immaculate luck to even find one. Then you gotta hope it's a good fruit to even be worth it. I'm sorry, but you're not getting much use out of the jacket jacket fruit. Since you're losing your ability to swim, you need something good. And please, like I said, don't expect to have any progress similar to Luffy. There's a reason why we're following Luffy and the Straw Hats. Their progress is astounding. The Straw Hats have only been physically together for months, not even a year yet. Most Yonko crews are around for multiple years on end. The third and final route I'm considering is becoming a Marine, which is pretty mid. You'll probably just become a highlight reel for a pirate or a Kainu. Marine 4 just had a bunch of fodder Marines getting body, so that'd probably end up being you. Your only bet in the Marines is to try and rise in the ranks as fast as possible, but even then, the world government will just punk you no matter how high you rank. Kind of like a certain someone. And I've left a lot of stuff out. Like you may have noticed, I haven't mentioned anything about the revolutionaries or more importantly, the new world. That's because that place is so unrealistic to survive in as a pirate without hockey. You need hockey like you need water in the new world, and that's gonna take a long while for you to train up. If you got no hockey and no crew and no master, you'll be running around the new world like your Usopp. There's also transportation in the One Piece world, which I forgot to mention, which is also far too dangerous to attempt alone. Random sea kings, varying weather conditions, and the lack of direction will immediately end your journey. The spoilers in the manga here, so skip ahead a little bit. But Vegapunk revealed in chapter 1113 that the world is sinking, so there's that as well. For our placement on the tier list i think i want to put one piece between the c and d tier i don't think it's near anime versus like demon slayer but the one piece world is not easy to live in it's not too hard to get bodied if you mess with the wrong people or if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time your best bet is to be a civilian and try your best to stay away from all the pirates and stuff but then again sometimes the danger just comes to you anyways if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the video so far you might as well subscribe anyways back to the video Next up is a childhood favorite show, Beyblade. Now, a couple months ago, there was like a month long period where Beyblade was making a resurgence on the internet, and I'm a bit late to that trend. So, this segment is low key me trying to get into that action again. Beyblade is a bit deceiving with its potential dangers. Basically, every kid has a Beyblade, kind of like how it was when I was younger. But just like most other kids' shows centered around games, the world seemingly revolves around Beyblade. What does this entail, you may wonder? It means a plethora of things, such as literal kids getting jumped for their bays with other bays, actual gangs with the basis of their power being from Beyblade, and Entire criminal organizations based on bays are also a thing in the Beyblade world for some reason as well. They're not even trying to get more money or anything like that. They just want more powerful bays. But this seems like typical kids anime stuff. It starts to get a bit crazier when you realize that bays as a whole have been around for millennia. Like apparently Moses in the Beyblade universe used a bay to part the Red Sea. A metal top that can fit into your pocket split the sea in half. You can't even make this up. The main bays in the metal series Pegasus and El Drago came from a meteor and are the embodiment of good versus evil in the metal series. Speaking of good versus evil some bays just straight up corrupt you because of their sheer power you get the wrong bait and you might end up tweaking out then there's also the dark power which isn't really explained that much in the series that well but here's the best demonstration of its capabilities <gasps> Yeah, so if you or someone near you happens to harbor the dark power and lose control, you have the ability to nuke a stadium. So be careful of that. Bays are also uncomfortably strong. Some of them can just knock back entire meteors going towards the earth, which I don't even need to explain how outrageous that is. Also, sometimes there's just a bunch of explosions in the middle of the cities because 12 year olds are playing with metal tops. I'm not even going to mention all the insanity that was going on in the original series. Jenga's bait is also casually faster than light by like a million times as well, making Storm Pegasus a planet 
it buster. Jenga could probably stroll into a bunch of verses, say let it rip, and walk down half of our favorite characters. The more that I'm talking about it, the more that I realize that the Beyblade verse is actually type dangerous if you're younger and decide to become a blader. If you happen to get a strong bait, you really just have a walking nuke with you. If you don't get any bait that's OD strong, just don't even try to battle. It's not even worth it. Raiga was like 15 sending people to the hospital in a battle. Like this is not safe for kids. This is not blader spirit that he's launching out. This is a hollow purple he's hurling at this poor girl. If you have a younger sibling in the Beyblade world, you really need to watch out for them. They might just get bodied over spinning some tops after school. As for its placement, I'm thinking about putting Beyblade between the C and B tier. You can easily get bodied if you happen to run into someone like Metal Fusion Ryuga, but if you don't do any Bay battles, you should be fine. Just leave town once a year or so because there will be some massive tournament where kids who should be in school are tweaking out during a Metal Tops battle. The last world we'll be diving into is the Hunter Hunter world. So far throughout the series, a lot of the places that we see are basically like the normal world. There isn't some primary evil race of beings trying to eat you at night. Well, most of the time there isn't. The only things that are risky for the average human are political corruption, superpowered gang violence, and assassins. So honestly, it's not even that different from our own world, barring the superhuman abilities that some people have. As the name of the series suggests, you can become a hunter by completing an exam and getting your license. It's not the easiest exam, especially when you have people like this guy around, but if you're able to complete it, you now have the ability to do really anything you want. Hunters are typically out to explore the world, find treasure, hunt monsters, etc. But these things are all extremely dangerous to do in the hunter hunter world. You can get snuck by anyone if you feel bloodless just run away for your life chances are you will be getting murked and it's also possible that you will find out about things that you do not want to know about this world now i did forget to mention one tiny little thing about the series there is a power system called nen in the hunter hunter verse that plays a pivotal role in most characters strength nen is essentially an energy that people can harness to create a multitude of abilities ranging from bungee gum flaming punches teleportation chain manipulation etc nen is fairly complex so it would require a way longer time to explain that i I can probably do in this video. A majority of the world doesn't know about Nen. However, you'll know about it going into the verse if you were to hypothetically be teleported here. Therefore, you'll be able to create your own unique ability. Just know that you will likely need a master for learning Nen as most characters that we see in the series have needed one. And you will definitely need Nen if you want to be protected. A lot of the gangs and top hunters have Nen abilities. The most notorious gang I briefly alluded to earlier is the Phantom Troop, which is a group full of a bunch of Nen users and can cause rampant chaos if they want to. Whatever they want, they can basically take without someone really stopping them. Prime example being when they murk the entire Curter clan for their eyes and no one could stop them. Also, there's assassins in the Hunter Hunter world, so that's pretty cool. Now it's time to talk about the biggest dangers if you get placed in the series, the Dark Continent. In a nutshell, anything from this place is capable of murking you and every other human in the known world. All these calamities and threats to the human civilization kind of just chill here. The Chimera Ants were from the Dark Continent and caused so much chaos in the verse. The Ants were casually able to produce the multiple Nen users on par with or stronger than Netero, the strongest Nen user. And these guys were a class B threat. Something like a class A threat is even more more dangerous than the Chimera Ants somehow. If you're wondering what a class A threat would be, we've potentially already seen one. Meet Alika Zoldik slash Nanika, who is theorized to possibly be from the Dark Continent. Essentially, Alika will give you three commands. If you do them all, Nanika will give you a wish. If you don't do four of the commands, Also, it's not just you getting murked, but also your loved ones. Nanika will keep taking more of your loved ones until she's satisfied when you get murked. And Ala could be asking for some crazy things. She asks his butler for her whole liver, then proceeds to ask her for her intestines and brain. You are already cooked from the moment she asks you this first question. The craziness of these commands only happen due to the scale of the wish that she had to grant. So basically, if some idiot wishes for immortality or something, and you get close to Alika, you're done for. And apparently, there's a whole species of these beings on the dark continent. But you know, if we ignore all of that, the Hunter Hunter version is pretty chill to live in as long as you mind your own business that's why we're gonna give hunter hunter a c slash b tier because you can basically go around your life as normal just don't try to become a hunter and don't go exploring the dark continent or anything like that and you should be fine so that's another three worlds down and i think the placements are relatively accurate but i don't know you tell me it's also summer break so video should emphasis on the word should be more frequent thanks again to surfshark for sponsoring this video and don't forget about the link in the description for an extra discount with that being said have a great day peace out